Hey friend, it is your creative weird makeup artist pal Cat Sketch to bring you guys another episode in the Twisted Wizard of Oz series. Today I thought I would introduce you to the Wicked Witch. Of course she's mean, she's green, and she goes up in smoke. But I thought I would do a different twist on her. What if she's melted? What if she got burned? And since we are turning into the Wicked Witch, why not talk about the stolen shoes? Yes, they've actually been stolen, not only in the film, but in real life. In recent discoveries, there has been evidence of who actually stole one of the many pairs of shoes that were worn by Judy Garland in the film as a prop. And they were recently discovered, and so was the person who stole it. So let's dive into this very interesting story of the stolen ruby slippers and turn into the Wicked Witch. The ruby slippers are the most magical slippers of all time in film history. They are the sparkling red shoes worn by Dorothy Gale in the magical land of Oz, as played by the late Judy Garland in the famous and iconic classic, of course, 1939 MGM musical movie, The Wizard of Oz. But they also made a semi-sequel appearance worn by the child actress Feruza Balk, who played Dorothy in the 1985 Walt Disney classic cult, Return to Oz which was a film that stayed more faithful to the tones of the theme of L. Frank Baum's books of Oz. The history behind these shoes of Dorothy in the 1939 film was given these enchanted shoes by Glinda as they are taken from the dead Wicked Witch of the East, who was crushed to death under Dorothy's fallen farmhouse after it was carried to the magical land of Oz via Kansas Cyclone. Shortly after Dorothy and her pet dog Toto unexpectedly arrived in Munchkin Land. They were magically teleported onto the feet by Glinda's wand. This was done to successfully keep them from falling into the hands of the Wicked Witch of the East's sister, the Wicked Witch of the West, who wanted to use their magic to strengthen her own wickedness. Since she was the sister of the original owner, she believed they should rightfully be handed down to her. Throughout the entire story, she tries many times to retrieve them from Dorothy, who set out on an adventure in hopes to find a way back home. She meets her demise and is ultimately melted by Dorothy with a bucket of water when she imprisoned her in her castle in the haunted forest. In the end, Glinda tells Dorothy that she had the power to return back home all along. After she learned that there's no place like home, she clicks her ruby red slipper heels three times and wakes up in her bed in Kansas, surrounded by her loved ones, as if it had been just a dream. Everyone wants to know how many ruby red slippers from the props of the movie that there are. In 1970, a pair was found in the basement of MGM's wardrobe department. They were sold at auction for $15,000 to a still anonymous buyer who donated them to the Smithsonian Museum in 1979. Four other pairs of the slippers are known to exist. One commanded $666,000 on the auction block in the year 2000. The National Museum of American History curator says that the shoes are very much a favorite for visitors who remember Dorothy's wish as she clicked her heels. It's the idea, he says, of there's no place like home. The Wizard of Oz props were actually stolen from Judy Garland's museum in Grand Rapids, Minnesota in 2005 and were recovered 13 years later. A man has now been charged in the crime. A Minnesota man has been indicted on charges that he stole a pair of famed ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland herself in The Wizard of Oz from the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids, Minnesota the actress's hometown nearly 18 years ago. The red sequin pumps were recovered in a sting operation that ended in Minneapolis in 2018. But the authorities said that at the time that their investigation was continuing and they did not name any suspects. On Tuesday, a federal indictment in the U.S. District Court of the District of Minnesota charged Terry John Martin of Minnesota with stealing an authentic pair of the slippers, which officials estimated have a market value of $3.5 million. From the museum sometime between August 27th and August 28th of the year 2005, 
Mr. Martin was indicted on one account of theft of a major artwork. The one-page indictment did not provide any further details about the case. It was not immediately clear if Mr. Martin had a lawyer, and he could not be reached at numbers listed under his name. Mr. Martin himself told the Minneapolis Star Tribune on Wednesday that he had to go to trial and added, I don't want to talk to you. The newspaper reported that Mr. Martin lived about 12 miles south of the museum. Janie Hytez, executive director of the Judy Garland Museum, said in an interview on Wednesday that she was researching to find out if Mr. Martin had any connection to the museum. Although she was certain that he had not been an employee, it's a break in the case, which is good. She said, we are excited, speechless, and anxious. The slippers were stolen by someone who had broken in through a back entrance and smashed the plexiglass display case holding the shoes. With no fingerprints or security camera footage to go by, the police were left with very few clues. The only thing left behind was a lone red sequence. Federal, local, and private investigators pursued a variety of theories over the years, and eventually a private donor offered a million-dollar reward for locating the shoes, which were among several worn by Garland in filming the 1939 movie. There are three other pairs that were used in filming and were known to survive. A break in the search came in 2018 when someone approached the insurance company that owned the shoes claiming to have information about the slippers and how they could be returned. It quickly became clear officials said that the person was trying to extort money from the company. Investigators from the FBI's Art Crime Unit along with other federal agents in Chicago, Atlanta, and Miami organized a sting operation to recover the slippers. The authorities said they had not paid any reward money. Sayward Darby, a co-host of No Place Like Home, a podcast about the theft, said that Mr. Martin's name had not come up in her reporting. However, as our podcast discusses, there was a strong suspicion that there was a local connection to the crime. Someone with knowledge of the museum, the fact that the slippers were on loan there in the summer of 2005 and how easy they were to steal. Miss Darby said in an email, that's interesting. What's interesting is that Martin is just one piece of the puzzle. Over the 13 years, the slippers were missing. It is possible, likely even, that they exchanged hands. The indictment, Miss Darby said, raised questions about whether Mr. Martin might have acted alone or whether he might have been commissioned by a criminal syndicate. Much like The Wizard of Oz itself, this story keeps on giving, she said. Every time there's a new development, there are more mysteries. Rise Thomas, the author of The Ruby Slippers of Oz, a book about the shoes used in the film, said that Mr. Martin certainly wasn't on his radar. I have a feeling that this is just the tip of the iceberg, Mr. Thomas said. I don't think a single individual would have opportunistically grabbed the shoes and then sat on them for 13 years and then gotten himself involved in an extortion case. When the shoes were stolen, they belonged to a collector in North Hollywood, California, and were on a loan to the museum which opened in 1975 in the house where Garland lived as a young child. The Judy Garland Museum had put the shoes on display in 2005 during an annual festival celebrating the actress. Strictly speaking, they are not a pair. The left and right shoes are slightly different sizes and are considered to be the mates of the left and right shoes housed at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. In The Wizard of Oz, Miss Garland playing Dorothy clicks the heels of the ruby slippers three times and utters the words, there's no place like home, magically transporting herself back to her home to Kansas. Miss Hyde said on Wednesday that although the shoe has been recovered in 2018, they had remained in federal custody as evidence in the case. She said she hoped that they could one day be returned to the museum and displayed again. 
They are widely considered to be among the most recognizable cultural objects in American film. It's just such an iconic item that means so much to so many people, Ms. Height said, adding that to many, the slippers represent home and a sense of place. It would be a shame for them to stay in a locked case for the rest of time. And that concludes us turning into the Wicked Witch as she's melting. Oh no. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about the recent discoveries of the missing red slippers, how much they are sold for, where some of the props of the ruby red slippers from the film were found. All of this is so interesting and exciting to me, and I hope it is to you. Stay tuned for more videos as we dive into Oz even deeper. Subscribe for some more, and you can follow me on all my social media accounts. I hope you guys enjoyed this. All the products I used in this video will be listed down below if you want to check out any prosthetics or makeup products, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!